Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. Uh, this is Professor Anup Ghosh uh, from Aerospace Engineering IIT Kharagpur. This is the seventh lecture in the series. Uh, in this lecture, what we will cover is aerodynamic loads and load factor. So, what are the concepts we will be covering? Uh, is flight vehicle aerodynamic loads that is not in detail, it is in a very, very small or maybe we must say in a very brief way uh, how the load comes and then the calculation of load factor at different flight conditions, how do we calculate it, one example and then we will see the bending moment and shear force calculation for a with some example of an aircraft. But before we go into those, uh, it is bit better to have a recapitulation. Uh, in the recapitulation, we can say that we have already learned in our previous uh, lecture that what is flight envelope is and uh, how does that flight envelope governs the design uh, of an aircraft, how airworthiness criteria and regulations come and we need to follow those and how we need to take care of all those requirements. And previous to that, we have learned in, in various way uh, how different loads uh, are encountered by an aircraft and um, we have also learned the history of aviation, history of aircraft. We have also had a look in into the history of solid mechanics, which actually lays, lays the path of structural analysis with respect to aircraft structures. So, let us uh, start uh, today's class with a, a note of uh, aerodynamics load and then a few examples or considerations to calculate load factor and bending moment shear forces. So, if we See, flight vehicle aerodynamic loads, if we think of finding out how the load comes in, uh, it is the simplified approach we uh, will be following. Uh, as we have seen that we have denoted that C coefficient here as C z. So, we are not worried about in which exact direction the C L is acting, but we are talking about the component of it which is acting in the z direction. We are also talking about the component as C x. So, let us see what are the things we do after reading out this small description we will see generally the thrust line is considered as the axis. The first aerodynamic data required for the structural analysis are the lift, drag and pitching moment. So, unless we have these data, we cannot design any aircraft. So, then on that the load factor or the flight envelope gives us the maximum load that is uh, we need to multiply it by n. Unless we have the lift, we cannot find out the maximum lift or design lift or ultimate lift. We need to find out drag, we need to a pitching moment, we need prepare this as curve with respect to the alpha or angle of attack. For the complete airplane with horizontal tail plane removed, this is important. This is the general criteria, generally the structural design starts. 
through the range of angle of attack from negative stalling angle to the positive stall angle. Negative stalling and angle and positive stalling angle already we have talked about stall angle. Stalling is the phenomena when aircraft loses is lift probably you are already introduced to it. Negative and positive is that while it is in positive angle of attack or while it is in negative angle of attack. Wind tunnel test of a model aircraft with the horizontal tail plane removed will provide values for the of the lift drag and pitching moment for all angle of attack. Components of lift and drag with respect to airplane reference axis are then obtained. The airplane reference axis are usually chosen parallel and perpendicular to the thrust line as shown by x and z axis. That is what we, I mentioned in a brief the thrust line this line is the thrust line which is considered as x and perpendicular to that is the z axis. The forces along the axis CZQS and CXQS where Q is the dynamic pressure equals to half rho V square and S is the wing area. So, to force coming from the lift is this is the total force CZQS in vertical direction and in the horizontal direction is this much. Now, what do we do? We, we have though that C z curve and C x curve from experiment and nowadays probably before experiment numerical studies are done and similar condition we find out those data. We simulate and find, find out those data. Here are angle of attack alpha is theta plus i, i is the incidence angle and uh, theta is the thrust angle with the flight path. And definitely a simple with respect to this diagram, if we see this we get the C z as C l cos theta plus C d sin theta and C x as C d cos theta minus C l sin theta, where C l C d are the coefficient of lift and drag without the tail plane. Similarly, C x and C z are the non, excuse me, C x and C z are the non-dimensional force coefficient without the tail plane. The pitching moment about the airplane CG is obtained from the wind tunnel data which is M generally given as that C m alpha C bar Q s. C m alpha is the dimensionless pitching moment coefficient of the airplane without tail plane and C bar is the main aerodynamic chord. So, uh, this data we need to need for our structural design we generally many times refer to this for this reason these parameters are uh, shown here uh, to some extent explained and we will see how this data we will use for our structural purpose. Okay. Those we have found out, but there is something more, there is something more for different flight condition, there is a contribution of the tail, how, how the balancing tail load comes. So, balancing tail load comes this way as we, we learn, balancing tail load on the horizontal tail CTQS is obtained from the assumption that there is no angular acceleration on the airplane. So, uh, there is uh, nothing like no angular acceler acceleration, uh, no pitching movement is there or pitching acceleration is there. C t is a dimensionless tail force coefficient expressed in terms of wing area and L t. Please note expressed in terms of wing area and L t. What is L t? L t is the distance from the C g to the point reference point in the tail plane. So, due to various pressure load and horizontal L t is the distance from the airplane center of gravity to the resultant load on the horizontal tail plane. Due to the uh, variation of pressure load on 
horizontal tail plane L t theoretically varies for different loading condition. It, this varies, but uh, anyway we may consider uh, this as a fix and we may start our calculation. So, uh, moment of the forces about the center of gravity are in equilibrium. So, that is what with respect to this point the moment is considered. So, with CM, CM alpha C bar Q s that is uh, this one is e equals to C t Q s L t and that is what is uh, done and then from there C t is equals to C bar C m divided by L t and the aerodynamic force on the aircraft in the z direction comes as the sum of these both these two forces which is equals to C z z we consider as C z plus C t. Flight vehicle inertia loads, uh, this uh, I was uh, bringing in repeatedly in our previous discussion. Let us see in a, in a methodical way what it is, how it is comes and we will let us solve uh, a few example with that. The maximum load on any part of, of a flight vehicle structure occur when the vehicle is being accelerated. The acceleration may be forward, may be upward. So, let us see how this acceleration may come with example we will learn. The loads produced by landing impact, manufacturing, gas, boost and staging operation, launching and docking are always greater than the loads occurring when all the forces on the vehicle are in equilibrium. So, whenever there is a sudden change, there is the maximum load encountered by an aircraft that is what is said that is landing impact, manufacturing, gas and boost, gas boost and staging, launching and docking all these things. Before any structural component can be designed, it is necessary to determine the inertial forces acting on the vehicle. So, we need to find out that is what it says the inertial forces and uh, in general in three dimensional point of view we define the inertial forces in this form. But for simplicity we will solve problem in, in a separate manner not in three dimensional form. Three dimensional form is really bit complicated we will learn later. So, load factor for translational acceleration for, for flight landing conditions in which the vehicles uh, for flight landing conditions in which the vehicle has only translational acceleration. Every part of the vehicle is acted on by parallel inertia forces which are proportional to the weight of the part. So, this is a, a very very good example we always see while, while we experience the braking of a car. Uh, that is what we all have experience. What happens? We, we face some, we go, go, go forward or for a sudden acceleration what happens? We push more pressure on the back of the chair. So, that is because of our body inertia we are pushing it back and there is a hinge and in our in our waist. So, that is what it is either pushes, pushes it back while it accelerates or we come forward while it decelerates. But that is a visible, visible movement our muscle system accommodates that is very slowly. It, it is not that slowly happens in all other structures. In case of aircraft this is very predominant because change of velocity is huge in range. It is not like a car where the in general the, it varies from 10, to 10 20, 30 uh, kilometer maybe within 2 or 3 seconds. So, it becomes the 
becomes more in case of uh, flight vehicles or aircrafts. So, that is what is discussed here. When the vehicle is being accelerated upward, this that is the condition we will be considering now. Uh, one point let us uh, consider very carefully that it is accelerating upward. This is what up this direction it is acting, this direction it is acting. Now, which way the inertia force is acting? This is the mass W by G multiplied by A. This comes from the D Alembert's principle in the opposite direction. So, if it goes up in a positive acceleration in the goes up, the it acts in the opposite direction of it. So, that is what the inertia load acts on the system. Let n the load factor and from the load factor definition whatever we know that L is equals to n w and that is what is equated with w plus w a by g. So, lift has to balance both these forces that is what lift is equals to w plus w a by g and that is equated with n w and we get the n. And in a very simple algebraic way, we get that n is equals to 1 plus a by g. For downward acceleration, what happens? The inertia acts upward and since the inertia is acting upward, this, this is negative and it is becoming 1 minus a by g. N is defined as the number of g's of acceleration in the vertical direction. For st straight and level flight N is equals to 1, there is no acceleration. We say level flight aircraft model in wind tunnel is also 1 it is equivalent to the level flight aircraft standing on the ground is also equals to 1. So, these are the three typical conditions where what we generally encounter. Okay. when the flight vehicle has horizontal acceleration. Uh, this is the case uh, we see. Uh, we have since, since it is going this way, uh, accelerating is this way A x component. So, the A w A x by g is the inertia force acting following the Lambert's principle and that is what is equated in this equation. It is very easy n w is equals to n w by g multiplied by a x, which is equals to thrust minus drag. Drag is not shown here, actually drag is acting in this direction. Okay. So, what we do we get from the balance of this is that w a x by g is equals to t minus d and n x equals to t minus d by w. So, a more general case if we look at while it is in, in, in a different condition and this is the z axis, this is the thrust line, this is x axis, this is z axis, w is acting this way. And uh, if we look at the component, this is the component in the z direction is the acceleration acting assuming that it is moving upward. So, the dummy force inertia force following the Lambert's principle is acting this way and one more component is act acting in this direction. So, in the z direction if we consider the lift is is definitely is balancing the component of it
So, this is balanced as w cos theta plus this amount w a z by g and if we consider summation of forces in the z direction which leads to that n w is equals to this amount and n is equals to this is n z is equals is equals to is equals to a z by g plus cos theta. In the x direction if you look at we have a similar equation T and D, D, D is here indicated T is acting this way, D is acting this way and we finally, get n x equals to the same equation what we have here. In the case of uh, aircraft landing, in case of aircraft landing, uh, the landing load factor is defined as the vertical ground reaction uh, divided by the aircraft weight. This is what the ground reaction whatever we get. Uh, please note that inertia force is acting downward the load factor in the horizontal direction is similarly defined as the horizontal ground reaction divided by the aircraft weight. So, whatever the R x value is that is divided by the weight. So, in 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 z is this one and in x is corresponding to this one. So, uh, a few example of different conditions and how do we find out the load factor uh, we have covered and let us uh, try to solve a few examples one or two examples. And example 1 when loading on an aircraft carrier sorry when landing on an aircraft carrier a 5000 kg aircraft is given a deceleration of 3 g by means of a cable engaged by an arresting hook as shown. Here cable is not shown, but uh, the tension by the cable is shown here. This is the tension by the cable and uh, it is given a 3 g deceleration weight of the aircraft is 5000 kg. So, let us see what are the things we are supposed to find out. Find the tension in the cable. So, T what is T that is first question the wheel reaction R this is the second question the distance E this distance E from C G to the line of action of the cable. So, we assume that this is the line of action of the cable and from C G it is E distance apart. So, we need to find out what is that. Another question we have find the tension in the fuselage at vertical section A A B B in the portion of the aircraft forward section A A. If the portion of the aircraft forward section A A has a mass of 1500 kg and the portion aft of section B B has a mass of 500 kg. This needs some additional figure uh, that figure we will see later we will come back uh, and do. This portion 
A A this portion if we separate it out and this portion if we separate it out uh, this portion A has 1500 kg mass, this portion is having 1500 kg mass and this portion is having 500 kg mass. Okay, let us try to solve the first portion. Need to clean. A problem is very simple. 10 degree is given and acceleration is also given. So, that is what for the x direction is equation is drawn this type of problem we have solved many times. So, there is not much uh, important given on it so, importance given on it where acceleration is 3 g this is important 3 into 9.81 this is the total acceleration and t is equals to m a by cos theta t is equals to this uh, I do not think there is a explanation required. Uh, please note that we are not considering any friction. Uh, F y is equals to if for the reaction we, we consider some of the forces in the vertical direction they are also comes the t portion that sin theta portion of it and uh, if we solve this simple equation we get r is equals to 74946 Newton. Considering the moment about C g this point this is the point what we have we get the value of E as 25 centimeter. I think you can solve it. So, the next portion Uh, consider the aft portion or the rear portion of the fuselage section B B, which is having mass of 500 kg with respect to multiplied by G. This is the total force acting here, and this is the acceleration acting at this point. So, if we again consider summation of in the x direction what we have we have this is the force that is what is asked uh, the force in this direction and that is that T 1 becomes 1 3 2 4 3 4 Newton. Uh, we take this components uh, this is the component 1 4 7 4 seven one four nine this this already we have found out so that is why with diagram we have put it here. In the vertical direction if we consider we can find out the shear force acting in this particular cross section. Similar manner if we consider the section left to the A section and the this is this is coming from the fifteen hundred kg load uh, that is multiplied not shown here with g this is also multiplied not shown here with g and solving similar equations we get the t 2 and v 2. But thing one thing by solving this example it is better to note that while it is arrested on a carrier for landing an aircraft is arrested by hook, uh, it, it experiences a huge load that is in the range of say T 2 of say 44 kilo Newton or here it is maybe 132 kilo Newton. So, this is not a very small amount of force and uh, accordingly there are uh, shear forces acting on it on the fuselage. So, unless these things are designed properly aircrafts are designed properly uh, it may lead to catastrophic failure. If you search internet nowadays internet is a big resource and that resource is uh, really uh, you may use it properly. There are example videos of failure in this way it is arrested and front portion means there is a vertical crack uh, in the fuselage and the front portions goes to 
accident uh, it is very very bad type of failure. Okay. Let us go for the next example, example 2. Okay, as I mentioned uh, the acceleration following D L M words in the previous example also, before we do anything this example is, talks about landing impact and important part of in this example is the D L M words following D L M words principle what is acting on M A. So, it is the deceleration and on depending on the direction it is it is uh, though the displacement in this direction since it is deceleration the inertia load will be acting downward. So, this point you please keep it in mind let us go to the problem now. A 15000 kg a 15000 kg aircraft is shown at the time of landing impact when the ground reaction on each main wheel is 22.5 thousand g newton or 22500 g newton if one wheel and tire has a mass of 250 kg, one wheel and tire has a mass of 250 kg, find the compression C and bending moment M in the oleo strut if the strut is vertical and is 15 centimeter from the center line of the wheel. To understand this uh, this language what is oleo strut. Oleo strut is, is the compression system uh, axial compression shock absorbing system instead of compression system it is better to say shock absorbing system. We, we observe in your motor bike probably all of you are introduced to motor bike if you look at the motor bike front uh, suspension that is the kind of oleo strut suspension that type of suspensions are also used in aircraft that is known as oleo strut. It is in vertical and 15 centimeter from the center line of the wheel. So, so this portion if we look at uh, I think this is this is the oleo strut portion. This portion uh, compresses uh, to absorb the shock as well as since there is a distance between this and the reaction that reaction will introduce some bending moment and that bending moment m we need to find out. We have discussed uh, in our last slide what the problem is and we have also discussed about why m a here it is acting downward and with respect to that first we need to find out the acceleration a which is not stated here. To do that we consider the equilibrium in the vertical direction considering that y is the vertical direction if we write the equilibrium equation it is uh, something like this and from there we get that a is equals to twice g. Once we get the value of a equals to twice g we can uh, find out the forces in the landing here. Oleo strut, oleo strut the vertical forces here if you draw the free body diagram of the uh, landing gear wheel uh, this is the oleo strut as we have discussed it is the axial shock absorbing member. So, the axial force we have given as C and the moment encountered here as M. So, uh, here for this uh, from your mechanics knowledge we can easily go for two equilibrium condition that is uh, the vertical equilibrium condition and considering the vertical equilibrium condition we, we get that the value of C is equals to 213150 Newton. Here this is uh, 500 g m a because 2 g is get mul getting multiplied with the two 250 and that is that is the reason. For the moment uh, what do we do? We, we consider moment about this point if we consider the moment about this point what happens uh, that this is acting 
in the same direction that is there is in 2 2 5 0 0 g multiplied by 15 is positive and the other negative portion that is 750 500 plus 250 is considered here and that gives us the moment this way. So, let us move to the next part of the problem. Next uh, part of the problem says that find the shear and bending moment at section A A of the wing if the wing outboard of this section has a mass of 750 kg. So, this portion is having a mass of 750 kg. Uh, so, this 750 kg is acting at 300 kg and has its CG 300 centimeter outboard of the section A A. So, from here here it is acting 750 g is the total force. So, this is a simple same mechanics knowledge we, we are supposed to use the vertical equilibrium equation is drawn 71500 g is acting uh, downward and then, then 750 g this is the inertia force this is the inertia force and this is the weight acting downward and that all together makes the shear force in this section. For moment we are considering moment about this point and we write the moment equation and we get this value. So, we will move forward for the next slide and we will see what we have. So, standard reference we have used what we have learned from this, uh, this lecture is that a concept of finding out flight vehicle aerodynamic loads process of calculations of load factor at different flight condition, bending moment and shear force calculation while it is landing or it may be in different flight condition with example of landing we have learned how to find out how to consider the effect of inertia while we are finding out bending moment and shear force. And with this uh, let us end today's lecture. Thank you for attending this lecture. We will meet again in our next lecture.